Queen Victoria's forgotten half-sister, who was Princess Theodora. The childhood of Queen Victoria is usually depicted as a lonely one, full of strict rules and nothing else. But Victoria grew up at Kensington Palace. Please continue to support my channel by subscribing. Alongside her older half-sister, Theodora, who was 12 years her senior. The young Victoria would walk through the gardens of Kensington Gardens, wishing onlookers a cheerful good morning. The young princess was not allowed to be on her own. She was watched like a hawk. Even during her walks of the grounds meant she was joined by her mother, the Duchess of Kent, who held one of her hands, and Victoria's older half-sister, Princess Theodora held the other. The trio became a well-known spectacle near Kensington Palace and they were often described by one observer as a group of exquisite loveliness. Victoria had always had a turbulent relationship with her mother, with their relationship leading to an eventual reconciliation once her mother had dropped the controlling John Conroy from her life. She did, however, remain very close to Theodora throughout her life. The sisters Victoria and Theodora communicated with one another for decades and offered each other with advice and emotional support as siblings often do. Princess Theodora was born in Borivia, Germany in 1807. She was the second child of Princess Victoria of Saxe Coburg and Southfield, and her first husband, Emmett Karl, Prince of Lenigan, who was much older than her mother. Theodora lived with her older brother, who was also called Karl, and they grew up alongside their mother and maternal grandmother, the Doja Duchess Augusta of Saxe Coburg. Her father was away fighting in the Napoleonic Wars. Augusta, her grandmother, wrote that Theodora is a charming little clown who already shows grace in every movement of her small body. At the young age of only seven, in 1814, Theodora's father died. Her mother was left widowed and so she went on to marry another man called Edward the Duchess of Kent, who was the fourth son of George III and who took on both Theodora and Karl as if they were his own. The British government were looking for an heir to the throne and the Duke of Kent was a bachelor with no intention of marrying or ever having children, but due to the heir of the throne dying during childbirth, the quest for a new heir of England began and that was the beginning of her mother's marriage with Edward, the Duke of Kent. The Duchess followed out her expectation of providing the country with its heir when she became pregnant quickly in 1819. The family then relocated to England so that the potential heir to the British throne would be born on British soil. Theodora's half-sister Victoria was born in May 1819 at Kensington Palace. Only six months later, her new stepfather Edward, the Duke of Kent, died, leaving her mother widowed once again. Like Victoria, Theodora was reportedly unhappy at her dismal existence at Kensington Palace when they were relegated to the decaying rooms of Kensington Palace. They had fallen from grace and they were abandoned by the government, despite Victoria being their heir to the throne. When Theodora was 20 years old, she would be engaged and married to Ernest I in February 1828. The pair had only met twice and he was 13 years her senior. The match was arranged by Queen Adelaide of Great Britain as Prince Ernest I was her first cousin. As the half-sister of the future queen, Theodora could have married someone much higher profile and nobility. However, upon meeting Ernest, she believed him to be a kind and handsome, and so she was keen to marry him with the hope of escaping Kensington Palace. Indeed, she later wrote to her sister, 
that she escaped some years of imprisonment, which you, my poor dear sister, had to endure after I was married. Often have I praised God that he sent my dear Ernest, for I might have married, I don't know whom, merely to get away. Victoria took her role at her sister's wedding as a bridesmaid, with Theodora later fondly writing, I always see you, dearest little girl, going round with the basket presenting favours. Once married, the young women in new marriages were expected to move away and start a new family with their husband. And not long after their honeymoon, Theodora and Ernest moved to Germany, where she stayed until her death. Theodora and Victoria significantly missed one another and they communicated through letters frequently with great affection, with Victoria telling her older sister about her dolls and emotions. It would be six long years until the two sisters would reunite. They returned to Kensington Palace to spend some time together and upon her departure, Victoria wrote, I clasped her in my arms and kissed her and cried as if my heart would break. So did she, dearest sister. We then tore ourselves from each other in the deepest grief. I sobbed and cried most violently the whole morning. Theodora took her role as a wife seriously and managed to provide her husband with plentiful children. The couple had six children, three boys and three girls, all of whom survived into adulthood. One of her children, Elise, died at 19 of tuberculosis. After Elise's death, Victoria sent a thoughtful gift to her sister of a bracelet containing a miniature portrait of Theodora's late daughter to her. Through their correspondence, it was evident that the sisters shared parenting styles. Their styles differed, with Theodora encouraging leniency with Victoria's son Edward, who had been playing pranks on his siblings. As another homage to her sister, Victoria and Albert named their youngest daughter, Beatrice Mary Victoria Theodore, in her honour. Both sisters were in happy marriages, but both of their lives came crashing down around the same time. Both Victoria and Theodora were widowed when Ernest died in 1860 and Albert died in 1861. Victoria wished to keep her sister close to her and for them to live together as widows in Britain, but her sister refused. Perhaps she wanted to avoid years of mourning and strict rules. Instead valuing her independence, Theodora responded to Victoria's invitation in writing, I cannot give up my house nor my independence at my age. Twelve years after the death of her husband, in 1872, Theodora's youngest daughter died of scarlet fever. Theodora was inconsolable, writing that she wished that my lord would be pleased to let me soon depart. She died later the same year, age 64, likely from cancer. She died on the 23rd of September 1872 in her home after a long sickbed. Queen Victoria had last stayed with her sister in March of that year, when Victoria travelled to Baden-Baden. Victoria and Theodora said goodbye for the final time on the 6th of April 1872, and just one day later, Theodora wrote, My beloved Victoria, the parting from you was very painful, and that would be the last time the sisters would meet. Unfortunately, Theodora was already ill by then. Queen Victoria was devastated by Theodora's death, writing, My own darling, only sister, my dear, excellent, noble Theodora is no more. God's will be done, but the loss to me is too dreadful. I stand so alone now, no near and dear one nearer my own age, or older, to whom I could look up to, left. She was my last near relative of an equality with me, the last link with my childhood and youth. A letter which was dated to 1854 was found among Theodora's papers after her death. Addressed to Victoria, 
It stated, I can never thank you enough for all that you have done for me, for your great love and tender affection. These feelings cannot die. They must and will live in my soul. Till we meet again, never more to be separated, and you will not forget. Queen Victoria, who made a private trip to the villa for three days in September 1873, where she visited Theodora's grave and approved the final design for the monument created by Theodora's son, Victor. The angel on the tomb looks directly to the villa across the valley, although the villa no longer exists as Theodora would have known it. Theodora's grave still stands in Baden-Baden and can be visited. There have been many TV programmes written on the famous sisters, with various on-screen portrayals of Theodora, depicting her as having a range of different personalities. However, letters and correspondence between the sisters evidences an affectionate relationship between her and her sister. She was both warm and wise and deserves to be considered a valuable source of advice and care throughout Victoria's significant reign. Please continue to support my channel by subscribing. Please comment, like and subscribe if you wish for more stories and leave your suggestions below and I will endeavour to cover them.